Portions of the following program are transcribed. Here's Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Yep, door's open. Mr. Diamond. Well, Angelino, come in. I didn't know whether you were busy or not. If you didn't hear the drums, you'd know I'm not busy. Drums, Mr. Diamond? Well, it's a sort of a ritual, Angie. Every time I get a paying client, my landlord offers up his thanks to the goddess of joy. Plays an old bongo and turns on the heat as a kind of sacrifice. I see. Oh, no, no, you don't. You're too normal. What's the trouble, Angelino? The pig's knuckles in your butcher shop got arthritis? <laughs> you always with the kidding, Mr. Diamond. Yeah, that's the kind of a hairpin I am. Hairpin? Uh, Angie, you got something on your mind. Forget my little asides and let's have it. Uh, I got the big problem, Mr. Diamond. Oh, you mean something's wrong and you can't pay me to take care of it? Oh, no, no, I can pay. Oh, well, then you haven't got a problem. You slip me the cash and I'll move in on your worries. Well, you see, it's like this. I come to you as a sort of representative for all the other butcher shops, the independent ones. I ain't the only one that's worried. So all the butchers got together last night and decided to do something about it. I, uh, I hate to be uh, a nag, but do something about what? We all been paying money to a protective association. Oh? Yeah, every week a couple of guys come around and collect. If we don't pay, we get our shops busted up. And if that ain't enough, we get our heads busted too. See, I still got three stitches right here on the top of my head. Oh, Nice job. What did the doctor use? A loom? I got this last week when those two guys come for the money. I couldn't pay, so one of them hit me with a blackjack. You're lucky you didn't use one of your salamis. Might have been a job for homicide. He knocked me out when I, when I come to. The shop was a mess. There was a note saying that they'd be back. Well, you better go to the law, Angelino. They'll give you good protection and won't cost you a thing. We discussed that at the meeting, but we decided it was too dangerous. We've been warned that if we go to the police, we'll get hurt bad. We got the families, Mr. Diamond. We can't take the chance. Yeah. Uh, tell me, have these two Garnifs been back to see you? Garnifs? Oh, Angie, you're going to be a lot of trouble. Garnifs, hoods. Hoods? Gangsters, bad little boys. Oh, no, they ain't been back. Not yet. Well, for you or Rockefeller, my fee is the same, Angelino. One hundred clams uh, uh, dollars a day in expenses. We took up a collection. I uh, only got a hundred dollars. Oh, why does this always happen to me? I'm going to end up making Simon Legree look like Snow White. You only got a hundred. Huh? Yeah, mm. but we thought of something. If it costs more, you can take it out in trade at any of the butcher shops. Well, it's liable to run into a lot of ham hocks. <laughs> it's the only way we can pay you. So I'll throw a barbecue. Let's go, Angelino. Where do we go? Well, you and the rest of the butchers have not only hired yourselves a private detective, but you've got a new addition in the butcher's union. You mean you... Yeah. Come on. I want you to show me how to carve a lox. Well, that's what happens when your reputation gets around to the butcher shops. I'd been buying cold cuts from Giuseppe Angelino for the past two years and telling him what a great detective I was. I should have known he'd never take my word for it, so now I had to prove it. His shop was over on 10th Avenue, so we walked over and went in. He took me around behind the counter and handed me a white apron. I don't get it. Why you want to be a butcher? Well, Angie, you want me to get a line on these two guys who do the collecting, don't you? Sure. Well, I can only think of two ways I could watch them and not look suspicious. Make like a butcher or crawl in with the ground round. Huh? Think what would happen if someone looked down for the price of ground round and caught it staring back at them. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a good one. That's pretty good. Oh, now, come on, <laughs> Angie. It wasn't that funny. Oh, you got my hundred bucks, ain't you? It's a riot. Yeah, I am. Well, uh, uh, come on, let's... Uh, Show me what happens with this butcher racket. Uh, oh, customer. I'll show you later. Oh, nothing like learning fast. Let me handle the sale. Think you can? Yes, he comes. Uh, oh, good morning, Mrs. Hennessy. Oh, good morning, Mr. Angelino. Business must be good. I see you have a new butcher. Oh, uh, y yes. Uh, this is a Mr. Uh, Hangtooth. Hangtooth? Hangtooth. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Hennessy. Something I can do for you? Oh. Uh, Yes. How much is the lamb shoulder today? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, which one? 
What? Look, uh, maybe you better let me uh, take... Relax, Angie, I'll make it. Uh, which shoulder would you like, Mrs. Hennessy? Well, is there any difference, young man? Oh, yes, yes. You see, this lamb is really a ram. A ram? Oh, sure, yeah. Hurt his shoulder playing against the eagles two weeks ago. We're also selling his shoulder pads at 21 cents a pound. Mr. Angelino. Uh, you'll find him hanging in the back with the spare ribs. Now, if you can tell me which shoulder you want, I'll wrap it up and send it off tackle between the liver and the knishes. Well, well, I never... Well, of course you haven't. That's the trouble with you people. Now, here's a nice little ram that played his heart out. Oh, by the way, the heart is a special today, 11 cents a pound. Hmm. Angie. Is she gone? Like a laundry in a tornado. What for do you want to do that, Mr. Diamond? She was one of my best customers. I wanted to get her out of here, and I wanted to get her out in a hurry. But why do you have to do it like that? Not a lamb, a ram. Which shoulder do you want, Miss Hennessy? Look, Angie, I'm sorry, but you can explain it to her later. Just as she came in, I spotted two guys heading this way. When they saw her, they backed off. They're standing across the street right now. Where? Right over there, in front of the cigar store. Hey, one of them has got a hatchet. No, no, not that one. You're looking at the Indian. Over there. Oh, oh, yeah. Hey. That's them. That's the two guys who hit me on the head. They're the ones who come around to do the collecting. Well, they're coming again. You better duck. I'll take care of it. You be careful. They're pretty rough monkeys. Go on, I'll beat it. They're almost here. Yeah, yeah. I'll be in the back. One meat ball. I got you under my skin. I got... Well, well, well. Good morning, gentlemen. What can I do for you? Where's Angelina? Oh. Well, uh, he's out buying some old buffalo. I'm the new assistant. Buffalo? Red. Shut up. And get your hand out of the pickles. All right, now tell me, new assistant, when will he be back? Well, that's hard to say. These buffalo are in Wyoming. Oh, yeah. Carl, you know, I think this guy's trying to be funny. You win yourself a lamb chop. All you have it, with or without the bloomers. You know something, Red? I think you're right. What's your name, laughing boy? Hangtooth. Hangtooth? Oh, I'm going to have more fun with that. It throws everybody. Well, look, Hangtooth. You know who we are. Uh, how many guesses? You won't even need one. We're in a hurry. We're collectors. Uh, we put all the scraps out in the back in a can. You can't miss it. I don't like you. Well, I have a friend. Maybe we could double date. Look, let's stop the clowning. If Angelina didn't tell you about us, it's going to be too bad for you. We're here for some money. We get it every week. Twenty-five bucks. Yeah. Last week, Angelino didn't have it, so he accidentally hit his head. We figured that all that blood would make him remember it this week. Well, I'm sorry, friend, but Angie didn't say anything about it. Tell me, what does he pay you boys for? Oh, little things. Protection, mostly. You see, if he paid us last week, he wouldn't have hit his head. You know something? I know a big, fat cop who would just love to hear all about this protection Angie's paying you for. You do, huh? Yeah, I do, huh? Well, uh, look, seeing as how you're a new boy around here, maybe we ought to tell you first. Why don't you do that? Let's go on the back. I like it here. I listen better. You do, huh? Is that all you guys can say? Now, get out from behind that counter. Oh, I want to explain the thing to you. Yeah, go on, Red. Explain it to Mr. Hangtooth. Hangtooth! You'll have to pardon him. He don't hear so well. How's your hearing, Hangtooth? Depends on what I'm listening to. If it's dull, I might end up with an ear trumpet. You might end up with one whether it's dull or not. Now, seeing as how you're working for Angelino, you're going to need protection, too. So let's have the 25 bucks. I want to know what I'm buying. Sure. Here. Oh, now, don't you know it isn't nice to go around breaking up showcases, and especially with that nasty old sap? Well, you never know when things are going to get busted, see? Now, uh, don't you think you need protection, Mr. Hangtooth? Uh, tell you what I'll do. I'll pay you for protection if you'll pay me. Pay you? For what? Well, you never know when things are going to get busted. Like your jaw, maybe. Why, you... Hey, Carl, help me. Yeah, sure, I'll help. This looks like my head-breaking day. <laughs> Got his legs. All right, hold him. I'll tap him good. <laughs> Give it to him again. <laughs> oh, he's a rough one, ain't he? Yeah, kick me in the mouth, will you? <laughs> hey, Red, let me try that, huh? Hang to turn such a pretty color when you kick him like that. He's out. 
You think he gets the idea? Maybe not right now, but when he wakes up, he's going to have a sore head to remind him. Come on, we'll come back for Angelino later. Well, you can't really blame brave little old me for going to sleep at that point. One, I could have handled, but in that cramped space behind the counter with both of them coming from different directions, I had to give up sooner or later. And I did for about 20 minutes. When I finally snapped out of it, I looked up and saw three heads staring down at me. Two herring with Angelino in the middle. You all right, Mr. Diamond? Oh, Angie, do you always ask people that right after they've lost their blood? Here, let <sighs> me help you get up. Oh, oh swell. <laughs> now, uh, look for my eyes, will you? I didn't know what to do. I guess I should have called the police. Oh, why, Angie, you're really beginning to think for a change. Oh, let me sit down. Uh, but when I thought about calling the police, I also thought about my family. Those two men might have beat up my family just like this. Yeah, 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 I guess you're right. You take the $100, Mr. Diamond, and forget about this. It's a too dangerous. When they come back, I'll pay them the money and nobody gets hurt. Look, uh, look, I can understand why you're scared, Angie. Those, those two headhunters aren't kidding, but you can't let them get away with it. I can, and I will. I need taking no more chances. First, they bust up my shop, then they bust... No, thanks. I've had enough. Okay. Okay, Angie. Here's the hundred. No, no, that's yours. And then say it's a present. Buy yourself some new glass for the counter. What are you going to do? Well, now I got no obligation, Angelino. Just a sore face and a nasty disposition. I won't get back to normal until I find those two guys and tie their necks in a bow. I left Angelino's shop and headed for the 5th Precinct Police Station. I wanted to look up two sure bets for the police gallery. One named Carl, the other Red. Two guys who went around scaring poor little businessmen like Angelino. By the time I reached the station, the aches from the beating were making me very unhappy, and when I walked into the squad room, I spotted something that didn't make things any better. Yeah, what are you... Holy cow, Diamond. Well, Otis, I'm glad you noticed. It means I put myself together all right. What's the matter with your voice? I got a cold. Sound like you swallowed a rattlesnake. Yeah? Well, what happened to you? Oh, don't be silly. I always bleed just before lunch. Yeah, how'd it happen? It wasn't easy. Is the lieutenant in? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. Say, Otis, when are you going to start shaving in the morning? Why? What's wrong? Your five o'clock shadow is four hours fast. Oh... Hello, Walt. Now you listen to me. Wow! You like it? What hit you? Wait till the bruises show up. I come on in Technicolor. Someone sure did a good job. That someone is two guys. One named Red and the other Carl. Red, then Carl. Yeah. I got closest to Red. Name matches the hair, busted nose, about 190, and very nasty with a sap. And Carl? Dark greasy. Well-dressed, if you like the type. Big boy with a scar under his uh, right eye. You sure pick him. You know them? Yeah, I think so. Uh, here. Here's one of them. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, you are so right. This is sweet little Carl, all right. Carl Tate, sort of a new boy, import from Chicago. Yeah, here's the other one. Yeah? Yeah, that's Red. Yeah, they work together, a couple of muscle men. Mm, Red Dillon. <laughs> Arrests all over the place. One conviction... Salt with a deadly weapon. What they go after you for? Oh, they've been pulling a protection racket on some of the independent butcher shops. Who do they work for? They used to work for Jack Arnold before he got sent up. Well, I know they're not working this setup alone. It's too big. No, they wouldn't be. Hey, Tiny Easter's in town. Tiny Easter? Oh, used to be Arnold's right-hand boy. That's right. Came in about a month ago. I'd love to get something on him. Nobody has ever been able to nail him. Well, it adds up. He used to work for Arno, so did Carl Tate and Red Dillon. Now, if we can't pick him up just because two of his boys worked you over, I just say they weren't his boys. I don't want him picked up. I want Carl and Red. If Easter goes along with the deal, you can have him. What are you going to do? Get cleaned up and pay Mr. Tiny Easter a visit. What's his address? Well, he's got an office on East 48th Street, uh, 804. Thanks, Walt. Uh, Tiny's a bad boy. Well, I'll take along my 38 just in case I have to spank him. Bye. <laughs> I left Walt and went back to my office. Took a clean shirt out of the closet and washed up. I locked up again, went down to the street, grabbed a cab. Twenty minutes later, I was standing in the reception room of Tiny Easter's office. A big guy with a bulge under his arm was trying to be as unreceptive as possible. So you want to see Easter? You got an appointment? No, I haven't got an appointment. Now tell Easter I'm out here. 
What's your name? You're going to get hung up on this. What do you mean? The name's Hangtooth. Huh? Yeah, you see? Now make like an office boy and tell Easter I got a message for him from Kyle and Red. You're a pretty fresh guy, ain't you? Yeah, and I'm going to spoil if I have to stand around much longer. You can spoil rotten for all I care. You ain't going to see Easter. He's busy. Okay. You know, you get so excited, you'll ruin your stomach someday. I don't think so. You don't, huh? <laughs> Skeptic. What are you, Wong? I'm collecting scalps. Well, good for you. How'd you get by Lefty? He's tied up with a stomach ache. Swallowed a fist. All right, so you got muscles. Also, you got a pushed-in face. Lefty do that? Kyle Tate and his blood brother, Red. Oh? What'd you come to me for? They're working for you, Auntie. You smell like a cop. Name's Hangtooth. I doubt it. Good for you. I'd hate to go through that again. I'm a private cop. Why not good for you? I was in a butcher shop when your two boys wandered in and started playing squash with me. I don't like to get pushed around Easter. And I don't like your racket. I want Kyle and Red. And if I get you along with them, the state will hang a medal on me. <laughs> Looks like you kind of got nothing to lose. Look at it any way you like. Now, what about your two playmates? Well, I don't know what you're talking about, Seamus. I never heard of those two guys. I don't think you understand, Tiny. I'm pretty mad. I'm going to find these two guys, and I'm going to do it even if I have to be unpleasant with you. Why, Mr. Hangtooth, what do you mean by unpleasant? You break a leg, that's unpleasant. Oh? Well, uh, I got something in this drawer might change your mind. Yeah. Oh, my hand. Okay, a busted hand. Unpleasant enough? <laughs> Take your foot away. You're breaking it in two. Drop the gun in the drawer. Okay. Harry. Now, uh... Let me explain it again. If you go out and shoot 12 people tomorrow, I'm going to be sore about it. But when you start intimidating a bunch of hard-working little guys and their families, I go off like a skyrocket. Then when a couple of your cheap gunsels push me around, I explode. Look, friend, I tell you, I don't know these guys. <laughs> Look, Easter, please believe me. I don't know. You worked with them in Chicago. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth, Easter. I'll work you over like an eggplant in a subway. Look, whatever your name is, I got boys. They'll take care of you. Who's going to tell them to do it? I am. With your mouth swollen shut? <laughs> now, where do I find Carl and Red? <laughs> Golly, you knocked one of my teeth loose. Then I got 31 to go. I guess you really don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, friend, I understand. Ah. Now, now, where are they? You still need some encouragement? No, no. No, that's all right. They're in a warehouse. By the 14th Street docks. What warehouse? Rogers and Sons. Big sign on the top. Mind if I use your phone? Yeah, go ahead, by all means. Don't you know it's not polite to listen, Easter? Well, what do you want me to do? Go to sleep. <laughs> Well, Rick, I'm up at Easter's. He let you use the phone? Yeah, he's asleep. I'm going down to Roger's warehouse near the 14th Street docks. Carl and Red are down there. May need some help. I'll be right down. You better hop down here to Easter's and pick him up first. On what charge? I'll give you a charge after I see Red and Carl. Now step on it. But, 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 but... Contact. I left Easter's office looking like a second-class rest home and headed for the warehouse on 14th Street. It was getting late in the afternoon when my cab pulled up near the river and I got out. The cold breeze was kicking up little patches of white on the water and a light fog was moving in from the Atlantic as I started toward a big building with a sign on the top that read, Rogers and Sons, importing. The place was boarded up, but a window in the basement showed signs of recent use, so I jimmied it open and dropped down on the dark, cold pavement. I held my breath and listened. Radio playing from somewhere in the front of the building, so I started moving toward it. I went up a flight of stairs and onto the first floor. The 
radio was louder now, and I could make out an office door with a small light shining under the crack at the bottom. I moved up close and listened. Hey, Carl. Yeah? Shut off the radio. Okay. What do we have to hide out in here for? Because Easter said to. Besides, we don't know who that guy was we worked over this morning. He might have been a cop. So he was a cop. We worked cops over before. Look, Easter said we should stay undercover for a few days, so we stay undercover. All right, now deal the cards. Oh. Off that top. Get it? That's probably Easter. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What? He did, huh? Hey, what's the matter? Boss! What's going on? I don't know. That was Easter. The guy we worked over was in his office, pushed him around, and now that guy's headed down here. Uh, we can handle him. Sure, but something's wrong. Just as Easter was going to say what to do, it sounded like he got into a fight. I had some guy tell him to drop the phone. Hey, the cops. Yeah. Come on, let's get out of here. Yeah. Good afternoon, boys. Hangtooth. Hangtooth. Uh, Come back here, Carl. Uh, help me. You shouldn't have pulled a gun, Red. Since when do you butchers carry rods? Since we get pushed around by guys like you. I'm going to go get your friend. You can't leave me. I'm shot bad. I can't take it back. The law will be here in a minute. You're a lousy butcher. I hope Carl pays you good. I'll see he gets a chance to try. I left Red lying on his face and ran toward the front of the building. The only way out was that window in the back, and Carl was sure to be hiding somewhere in the dark, hoping to get around me and head for the basement. There were a dozen places to hide in that warehouse, but I had one advantage. He couldn't see me any better than I could see him. I backed up against the wall. Come on, Carl. Red's hurt pretty bad, and the law's on the way. You gotta get me to get out of here. He was behind a pile of packing cases and had a big gun just to make things tougher. I eased along the wall, trying to get behind him when I suddenly bumped into something. I turned around and felt to see what it was. A ladder, straight up to the steel beams overhead. I put my gun under my arm and started up the rungs. It was tough climbing like that, trying not to make a sound and knowing all the time if he spotted me, I was an easy target. About halfway up, I stopped, held on with one hand, took off my shoe with the other. The idea was to drop the shoe draw his fire and nail him before he found out where I was. I dropped the shoe. Come on, Otis. Okay. Okay, only take it easy. I can't see nothing. Look, then... Can't say nothing either. Shut up, you sound awful. Oh. Rick. Rick. Walt. I hear him, Lieutenant. Hey. Huh? Here's some guy that's been shot. Now, Diamond's been around here, all right. Rick. Here, Walt. Up here. What? Where the devil are you? Up here on this ladder. There he is, Lieutenant. See where my flash is. Now, what are you doing up there? I had to get Carl Tate. He's over there behind those crates. Now, get me down. Well, why don't you climb down? Whoa! Not in front of Otis. Oh, I forgot. Otis, go outside and call the fire department. Fire department? Yes, and tell him to bring a net. Why? Will you get a move on? It's... Oh, okay. Rick. Yeah. <laughs> now you stop that. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's so seldom that I ever get a good laugh at your expense. Okay. But you know this is a serious thing with me. How far up am I? I'd say about 40 feet. Oh. Now, now, take it easy. Just don't look down. Walt. Yeah? Promise me something? I won't tell Otis. I'll say you got stuck up there. Thanks. <laughs> what did you go up there for, anyway? I told you. I had to get Carl Tate. I just didn't think until I was up. Imagine the guy who shoots it out with two of the toughest torpedoes in town having a horrible fear of heights. Boy, if that isn't one for the books. You know, 
I'll never forget the time that that little blonde trapeze artist got stuck. What? Yeah? I hate you. Rick. Hmm? How's your face? Fine. How's yours? Now you stop that. Oh, nice and soft. Rick. What's the matter? I'm just nuzzling a little. You're just nuzzling a lot. You want to nuzzle? You got to sing. Oh, no. No nuzzling. Oh, yeah. No sing, no nuzzle. Fiend. Piker. Just a real nuzzle. I think you're after my earrings. No. If I sing? Yes. I was ready. I was listening. I will remember you In the silent and lonely night And the memory of your smile Will bring me back the light I will remember you when the leaves lie upon the ground With the memory of a kiss A kiss in summer fire When the winds of winter come crying through the darkness Your lovely voice will come to me even though in spirit across the miles that part us, crying I love you, I will remember you till the spring of another year, till I hold you close again. I will remember. Wait a minute. Oh, now what? I just remembered. I got a surprise for you. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Got a new television set. Now you can watch the fights. Well, uh, great, great. Where is it? In the den. But first you've got to do one thing for me. What's that? Well, the reception isn't very good yet. I called the repairman, but he said to check the aerial. He can't come over until tomorrow. I'll fix it. Where is it? On the roof. The roof? But be careful. You've got to climb a ladder to get to it. What's the matter? Look, uh, Helen, wouldn't you rather... Fix the aerial first. First? First. Oh. Whom are you calling? Hello, operator. Give me the fire department. You've just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Helen was played by Virginia Gregg, Lieutenant Levinson by Ed Begley. Also in our cast were Wilms Herbert, Nestor Piva, Paul Fries, and David Ellis. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Richard Diamond is written and directed by Blake Edwards. Portions were transcribed. Dick Powell soon will be seen in the screen version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike. <coughs> now this is Eddie King with an important reminder. Richard Diamond will next be heard on Sundays, one week from tomorrow. Remember, Richard Diamond, starring Dick Powell, will next be heard on Sundays beginning January 15th. Consult your local paper for time of broadcast. What's on NBC tomorrow? The hilarious Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. And for mystery, Sam Spade, directly following Phil and Alice. Next, Hollywood Star Theater with Dorothy L'Amour on NBC.